Hey everybody, um, so today just wanted to go over another communication protocol that you can use in LabVIEW. Um, so today we're going to talk about WebSockets. So WebSockets are um, a very low latency, very high speed um, way to you know, either send messages, but also commonly used for just streaming data. Um, it is uh, commonly used for like web applications, right? Um, and you can actually set this up pretty seamlessly to communicate from like a LabVIEW program to like a G-Web web application or any other web application. Um, there's also some cool stuff out there in the community for working with like Godot, so using LabVIEW to control Godot built web applications through LabVIEW using WebSockets. So there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with WebSockets. Um, and there are a lot of different, there are actually a couple different WebSocket toolkits available on VIPM. Um, the one that I'm demoing here today is from Media Mongrels. So um, Sam Sharp put this together. Um, this is the one that I've used. Um, and it works very well. Um, I'm sure the other ones do as well, but um, yeah, just wanted to show basically what we can do. So let's pull up our client code. Um, so I've got basically a pre-built client and a pre-built server. And this is to show a very simple configuration where we just want to stream data from one to the other. Um, so we are first gonna use this uh, new client function where we basically just need to connect to our server. So the URL is always going to be ws colon uh, and then two slashes. Then we have the IP address or DNS name of what we're connecting to. And then another colon and then the port that we're using. So the port is up to the server. Whatever port the server happens to be using, you'll need to connect to. Um, and that's pretty much it on the connect. Um, there's also this timeout. We can specify how long we want to wait. Um, but yeah. And then there is a handshake that occurs. So basically we're making sure that, um, that we're agreed upon using you know, WebSockets for this. Um, and this function here returns headers, just returns whatever headers that the server provides back. Um, and then from there, we're basically just using this uh, read text function. So we're just gonna read data back from our server display that, and then we've got this close. Um, and I can show you as well. Um, these are just gonna show up here in your palettes. Um, so, you know, we're using the new client, we're using the handshake, um, the header function is a little lower level, and that's also not required. Read text, we have close. Also, we can also read binary as well, if we want to. Um, lower level VIs, so you've got, you know, your header functions, um, you've got low level write and read, close frame, ping and pong. Um, there's some legacy VIs um, you can use if you want to, and there's stuff built around working with sockets. So um, don't really want to go into the socket stuff in this video. Um, but yeah, that's basically what you need to set up a client. Now let's look at our server. So for the server, um, there's just a little bit more involved, but it's still not too complicated. So here we are using the socket functions. Um, like I said, I don't want to go too into detail on these yet, um, but we do just initially need to create a TCP listener. Um, it's going to basically set up, listen for an incoming connection. And once we've connected, then it's all just using those uh, WebSocket functions. Um, so we're just going to create the listener. From there, we're gonna specify which port we're listening on and how long we wanna wait, which negative one just means wait forever till the client connects. Um, so we're listening on this port. Then we've got this wait on listener function, which is actually gonna do the actual waiting. Um, once something has connected, a client has connected to it, we're gonna close out this uh, Visa socket and we're gonna launch a new server from our socket. So this is gonna output the socket and we're gonna launch our WebSocket server. We're gonna do this initial handshake. Just, hey, make sure, are we using you know, WebSockets? Yes, if everything's good, move on. And then we're just gonna use the write function to write over and over and over again and close when we're done. So really pretty simple. Um, so I can launch the server. So it's listening, waiting for a client to connect. I connect my client. You can see I got my headers back. 
Um, and also I can see the data being streamed back and forth. So um, really simple way. And this doesn't have to be streaming from LabVIEW to LabVIEW. This can be streaming from LabVIEW to different web applications. Um, I've used it for GWeb. Um, and it can be to non-LabVIEW applications too, right? So you can be talking from LabVIEW to Python or, you know, LabVIEW to some sort of like uh, React interface or something like that. So, um, yeah, a lot of cool stuff you can do with WebSockets. Um, so if you're interested in this, uh, this toolkit specifically doesn't ship with LabVIEW. You do need to install it from VIPM, um, but it makes it very easy to just go and stream data securely. Um, there is also a secure WebSockets add-on on VIPM that you can also add on that allows you to enhance the security of this using encryption. Um, so like using HTTPS and TLS, as opposed to just you know transmitting uh, plain text data over the network, so or over the internet. Um, but yeah, that is how you can set up uh, WebSockets in LabVIEW. Thank you. Canon Controls is your gateway to mastering LabVIEW. Dive into programming for data acquisition, industrial communications, and manufacturing automation. Explore how to enhance your projects with cybersecurity best practices. Join the journey to elevate your skills and secure your systems with every episode.